Hey everybody, welcome to Cycling Videos Online, your gateway to indoor cycling adventures. Today's ride is going to be awesome. We start downtown Anchorage. It's about 8 o'clock p.m. and the sun is out and it's a beautiful day. And we're going to hop on our bike and ride through downtown Anchorage up to Glen Highway, which uh, takes us all the way into Eagle River and then we'll follow the Eagle River Road all the way to the Eagle River Nature Center. This is an awesome 30-mile workout, one hour and 38 minutes long. You're going to have to dig deep. This is not an easy ride. So get psyched up, get ready, and let's get going. So hop on your bikes, shift in those gears, throw on that spandex, and let's get working out. All right, we'll see you on the road. You are listening to the default audio track, which contains instructional narrative. To turn off this audio track, simply press the audio button on your DVD remote, or select the appropriate audio track on the download version using your media player. Well, welcome to my crummy hotel in Anchorage, Alaska. <laughs> That's not that bad. It's right downtown. And it's a gorgeous day. And like you just read, the plane had just landed. I had just enough time to unpack my bike and build it, put it all together, and start filming. And fortunately, though, uh, this is July in Anchorage. And it's light until about 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. So even though it's about 7 o'clock at night right now, we got lots of sunlight left. And it's awfully beautiful. The, I'm glad I had a chance to head out because the very next day, tomorrow, it was overcast, a little bit rainy. And I know that July in Alaska, uh, you know, you have to kind of cherry pick the, the pretty days. So here we are. This is downtown Anchorage and we're heading up uh, I think right to 4th Street and it's not uh, super scenic I understand but we got to get we got to get to the pretty part somehow so we're gonna just cruise here and I want you to use this opportunity to warm up just pedal with uh, easy resistance Cadence around 70, 80. Just get the blood flowing. Uh, this workout is going to get very hard. And it gets harder before it gets easier. <laughs> and it doesn't really ever get easy. So, this is about the easiest part. It has a little variable terrain on this ride. We've got a long stretch that's a, a nice mild climb along the highway on the uh, path which takes us up to Eagle River and then once we get to Eagle River on the highway we start hitting some nice little hills got some good sized bumps really gonna get the heart rate up and then as we're cruising along the uh, Eagle along Eagle River Road, right along the river itself. It's nice interval hills. So we're gonna hit a lot of high efforts followed by coasting or resting or just trying to, you know, keep our speed up downhill. That's a, just a beautiful view there of the Chugach Range in front of us. We're heading roughly north. And I just discovered that I'm on a highway, <laughs> so we're really picking up the speed here. 
we got a nice downhill so we're firing it up about 40 miles an hour traffic all around us so, oh sh <laughs> so, it was fun but <laughs> don't try this at home <laughs> there we go and a red light throw on those brakes It's nice to be light. Okay, we're rolling out here. As soon as that dashboard pops up, which is in just a minute, I wanna walk you through it. If this is your first video with us, then uh, I wanna make sure you're acclimated to the changes. If, uh, if it's not, then uh, you know, just follow those gear changes and keep up with the efforts. Okay, so that dashboard there that popped up a little bit is telling us everything we need to know about this bike ride. How much resistance to use, what our heart rate is, how fast we're pedaling, where we're at along the ride. And if you don't already have the devices to follow these tools, I'd recommend them do you want a heart rate monitor a cadence sensor and if you have the power meter that's even better so right now what we're doing is we're we're really cruising along on this road here keeping up our speed Pedaling at a cadence of 9,500 RPM. Feeling like we're working at a six out of 10. Heart rate, almost 90% of max already. So we're really making an effort here. So on the far right of the screen, you'll see a four that just changed to a five on the top and there's a blue line below that a 42 below that and a four below that what do all these numbers mean if you're riding a bike uh, on a trainer we're using our gears to add and subtract resistance. And those gears are what are being specified there. The 42 means that you should be in your small ring up front. If it asks you to put it in a bigger ring, you'll hear a, a beep. And then that 42 will change to a 52. And then I'll ask you to put your front gear into the big ring and increase that pedaling resistance using that bigger gear. Then you have the blue line above that. And right above that just turned from a five to a six. Now seven, eight. And what that's telling you is to shift your rear gears from your easiest, which would be a number one, up to its hardest, which would be a number 10. So if you have a 10 speed cassette in the back, your easiest is one, your next hardest two, and three, four, and 10 would be the most difficult gear in the back. So right now it's coming down to easier gear four, up uh, four in the back, five in the back, and a 42 in the front. So you should have that gear dialed in now. You can take a look behind you, make sure your chain is right in the middle of your cassette. Oh, big ring up front, that 52, shift. And back to your small ring. Bring the resistance down a little bit. 
big ring again and we're just accelerating here and small ring and big ring I don't know what I was doing <laughs> and small ring so there's your practice big ring small ring <laughs> four in the back and a three and a two and now in your easiest gear should be a one out of ten you should be just pedaling nice and slow or just coasting here as we hit the little trail here that'll get us from the highway to residential and bringing up the resistance two three four and a five in the back 42 up front 52 up front big ring and we just probably have a little hill here and bringing it down easier gear good so that's how the gears work now below that 42 it's a little number you'll see that one at the very bottom and this is your resistance value so if you're not on a bicycle you're not on a trainer and you're on a spin bike instead with a little knob that lets you dial in your resistance that's the number you're gonna follow so now it says a two three out of ten four out of ten big ring for the rest of you so what you're doing it's a I don't know roughly fourth or half a turn per per change really depends on what your 10 out of 10 feels like so I would start out with a 10 out of 10 on the resistance and then just back it up like half turns and see how that feels until you're dialing back that resistance where a, a 10 out of 10 is a pretty grueling climb sensation where you're pedaling at about 60 70 rpm and a 1 out of 10 there's just enough resistance to keep uh, so that you have to use your legs to pedal instead of having the flywheel pulling your legs around small ring bringing the resistance down 3-2 and back up four bringing it down again as we come over that little hump there so every time we accelerate we got to use a little bit bigger gear and then when we hold a steady pace we'll use a smaller gear so you gotta build up your speed so these little stop signs we slow down like here coasting we come to a stop clear traffic and we start pedaling and that resistance is going to come up two three four five in the back and we're accelerating now we're getting our speed where we want it to be we're just going to hold it here and we're coming to the next stop sign so bringing that resistance all the way to its easiest gear and coasting accelerate here again and a seven eight in the back six out of ten on the resistance we're gonna accelerate past these guys here nine build up your speed good and bring that resistance down four three slowing down stopping again nice little interval stop sign interval workout <laughs> and make a negative into a positive here bringing that resistance up three four five in the back seven so six out of ten on the resistance and bringing it down a little bit as we find the, the speed we want to be at here now you know how to work the gearing looking at the far left at the very bottom left of the screen there's a white box it says zero rpm 
This is our pedaling cadence. So how fast we're spinning those legs. If you have a cadence sensor, it makes it awfully luxurious. Look at this guy, come on. <laughs> Bringing that speed back up, pass him. So now we're pedaling cadence at 80 RPM. We're at an eight out of 10 on the resistance, seven, six, five, and small ring. We got a gap. <laughs> Young pain in the butt. <laughs> now we're pedaling at a cadence of 92 RPM and bringing the resistance down just a little bit. Coming to a stop sign, resistance to zero and coast. Zero RPM, making the turn, pedaling again, bringing up the resistance. And big ring as we accelerate. Pedaling at 80, small ring. And we got, and we're going. So theoretically now, if you're following that cadence and that resistance as, as it's showing, your heart rate should be dialed in to the prescribed heart rate. And that's the graph on the left-hand side of the screen. Right now showing we're at 83%, 85%. And I'm looking at my heart rate through my microphone screen and I'm at 85% and all I'm doing is I'm following the gear changes and the cadence. If your heart rate is too high and this is too tough and you're, you have a the ability to adjust resistance on your trainer, raise or lower that resistance until your heart rate is comparable to that on the, on the graphic. And honestly, once you have that dialed in, uh, you hardly have to look at a heart rate monitor. It's gonna almost always be consistently on target. Big ring here, accelerating and small ring, 80 RPM. Now, that heart rate is displayed as a percentage of max. Right now it's showing 83 or 85%. You know, round it up if you need to. Bringing that resistance down. And our heart rate is dropping to 80. 78 as we're coasting here. 75 and we're just gonna pedal through here nice and gently and now raise that resistance and accelerate just a little bit here but keeping the pedaling cadence right around 70 so we're really not working too hard here heart rates at 73 percent and now our resistance back to a one out of 10. Now, if you don't know what your percentage of max is, I'd suggest looking that up, but uh, I'll give you a brief intro to that. What you need to know is your maximum heart rate. And this is basically a heart rate that you can sustain for about 20 seconds, and then you're completely pooped out. So let's say your maximum heart rate, after testing it, doing a field test, you got your heart rate up to 180, or 180 beats per minute. And that's the most your body will let you do. And no matter how hard you try, you can't push it over that number. Well, that's your max. Ta-da! But uh, other ways to get your max would be to do a stress test at the doctor, which is probably more recommended way if you've never done this before or if you're kind of starting out from more of a sedentary lifestyle or your doctor's telling you you need to lose weight, you probably don't want to push yourself up that hard. And what a doctor can do in a stress test is uh, bring your heart rate up 
and then calculate a maximum from from that based on how hard you're working but if you feel comfortable finding your max on your own then do that so we're at 78 percent pedaling cadence of 90 and bringing that resistance down to a 3 out of 10. Now looking directly below the heart rate, we have an RPE number, and that's a 4. And that RPE, that's called your rated perceived exertion. And this is a number you should be comfortable knowing and it's a the key word on this is perceived so this is how hard it feels like you're working nine out of ten is our perceived exertion now so we're accelerating up this little hill coming over the top perceived exertion is lowering seven six five and pedaling a cadence of almost 100 RPM. The more you can understand your perceived exertion, the better you can discipline your body, especially when you're without a heart rate monitor or an inability to actually check that data. Like if you're racing or in a pace line, there's too much going on around you. You should understand where you're at on that RPE scale from a one out of 10. So we've got our heart rate up now, almost 90%. We've hit that path with that long gradual climb and what we're going to try to do here is find a lactic threshold and maintain it all the way to Eagle River so we're trying to maximize our speed here or in better terms we're maximizing our power output we're going to go more into that Six out of 10 on the resistance, eight in the back. Small ring up front, down to seven now. Pedaling cadence at 90. Heart rate, 91%. Oh, we got a carrot. Keep that cadence up. Keep that heart rate up. We got a long way to go, and we're gonna hold this steady state work out for as long as we can and there's a few interruptions but not too bad hundred rpm So what I want to talk about during this workout is maximizing your indoor training. In other words, how do you how do you maximize the benefits of being on an indoor trainer when you can't get outside to ride? And ultimately our goal as cyclists and athletes is to be outside but when we can't get outside and we're stuck doing an indoor workout we want to get the most out of our time now these workouts are designed to 
make the effort go by quickly and try to remove the boredom and give you exactly the same effort that you would have gotten during this exact ride. So if you're me on the bike, doing this bike ride, by the time you're done with this workout, you're gonna feel just as exhausted as I felt by the end of it. All the efforts are synchronized with the road, all the heart rates and resistances and power requirements. Now we got a friend. A lot of friends in Alaska. Let me explain one more thing on that graph, on that dashboard. You'll see those three graphs right in the middle of your screen. The top graph is our hill profile. The middle graph is displaying our effort profile. So we actually got a little easy section coming up here. And the bottom graph is our power profile. Where are we really hitting the pedals hard? And where are we taking it easy? So there's that little white line, that double white line, ripping through all three graphs, which is showing you where we're located on that timeline. Bringing up that resistance, eight out of 10. 81 RPM. Bringing it down a little bit. Accelerating up this little hill. Now, if you don't already notice, I'm uh, riding right along with you. Three out of ten. 100 RPM. Let's go. and come back up and down so you're on your bike trainer this is about the safest space you can be in while simulating a bike ride you're not going to get hit by a car you're not uh, gonna need to call for a ride. There's no sag wagons. You can push yourself as hard as you want. And the only consequence of it will be giving up early and go and take a nap. You're not gonna be heat exhausted if you're getting too thirsty. You can stop the video and get a drink. On the road, you don't have those luxuries. So with that luxury, there's no better environment to test your abilities and really push yourself out and find out what you're made of and what you're capable of You really don't have any excuses uh, to uh, lay it all on the line. Now, like I said, this is a tough ride. Finish it if you can. If you can't, then uh, no one's gonna know but you. <laughs> Keeping that cadence nice and high here. 90 RPM, heart rate's at 92%. <sighs> Almost 100 RPM. Come on, bring that speed up. And what I wanna talk about are two different types of workouts. Well, I'm gonna only really talk more about one. 
but you have <laughs> figuring two types that I want to bring into this conversation you have the unstructured workout and the structured workouts now this one is unstructured for the most part meaning that the, the conditions of the road dictate how hard we're working if there's a headwind we got to deal with that if there's a hill we got to deal with that if there's somebody we got to pass we got to deal with that like a kid on a BMX showing you up <laughs> Unstructured workouts like this one are fantastic because they keep you on your toes. They're more interesting. They go by quicker. And you can usually sustain a longer workout without being too bored while getting into fantastic aerobic shape building strength as a matter of fact I was just looking up uh, research on uh, VO2 maxes for athletes talk more about that later but cyclists are among the athletes with the highest VO2 max only uh, rivaled by Nordic track or Nordic skiers and runners and but there is a tight race cycling you get the benefits of a low impact workout where you're not to tearing up your knees while maintaining an aerobic capacity that rivals every other sport out there whether it's football basketball baseball golf <laughs> you name it we are the healthiest animals on the planet or at least those with the ability to hold a tremendous volume of oxygen Hello. Well, here we are again. Hope you uh, enjoyed your workout. We are riding and uh, being tested for our metabolic rates here with uh, Stony Askew. And I'd like to just go through some of these uh, zones and what they mean and what we're experiencing while we're riding. So right now we're in uh, zone one and this is uh, typically our fat burning zone. And as you can see, the heart rate is right around 59% of max, and just below that, we're showing a fat burning of about 69% in zone one. And we're riding very comfortably, we're real relaxed. Uh, not a lot of heavy breathing going on. Uh, doesn't even really feel like a workout, but uh, our heart rate is working at 61% of its max capacity, so um, we are we are working, we're pumping blood and, and getting, uh, getting things moving and this is a real good zone to spend some time in, especially for warm-ups, warm-downs, recovery rides, you name it and uh, this is a great opportunity here to uh, just work off that, uh, that dinner from the night before. And we're slowly picking up the effort. We're close to the end of zone one at 68% of our max heart rate. Fat burning is at 62% and it begins dropping fairly quickly here. Uh, once we hit our aerobic threshold, our fat burning will decrease down to about 
Uh, and what we mean by that is we're burning 50% fats and 50% sugars. And our heart rate is slowly coming up, fat burning is slowly coming down. And we're in zone two, which is now our aerobic zone. We're still feeling pretty good. We can uh, spit out a few sentences. Uh, we're not breathing too hard. And this is a great endurance zone. This is a good zone to be in if you're looking at uh, spending a lot of time riding your bike, uh, cross country rides, century rides. Um, we're really uh, maximizing uh, fuel consumption here. But our fat burning is starting to uh, drop down to 42%. Now, the longer we spend in each of these zones, theoretically, we should be able to improve efficiency within this zone. So, um, if I spent a two-hour bike ride in zone two, hopefully, um, we'd improve efficiency, which would mean basically increased fat burning in that zone. Now, we've just dropped or popped over to zone three. Now, we're starting to become a little bit more anaerobic here. Um, breathing is becoming a little bit more labored. We're able to crank out a couple of words. Um, fat burning is going down, and now we're driving it up to zone four. And we're in our anaerobic zone. This is definitely our uh, threshold zone. And we're basically heading into the red zone here, which would be typically considered a red zone for most uh, workouts. We're at 89% of our max heart rate fat burning is dropping down to a mere 6%. So now we're burning almost entirely sugars. We're working off of quick, fast, uh, fueled energy. Uh, our body is searching for energy as quickly as possible in order to keep the heart rate up and the legs pumping. We've reached our VO2 max, and now we're heading into zone 5, which is full-on red zone, 96% starting to drive up the effort. We're going to try and hit 100% of our maximum heart rate. Uh, there's no more conversation. We're full on race pace. We're really working. This is basically um, working up to a sprint finish. The pace line is getting faster and faster and we're looking at that finish line coming right up. Uh, in zone 5, we're not going to be able to spend a whole lot of time in this zone before our body is completely depleted of energy for the muscles. Uh, ATP consumption has had full effect and we're uh, about ready to die here. So we're at 100% of our maximum heart rate. We're sprinting for the finish line as hard as we can. No fat burning whatsoever. All sugars, all ATP. Uh, is our, ATP is our, basically our only fuel source at this point. So, And now we're back and we're letting our heart rate come down, relaxing and finishing the metabolic test. So you can see by the uh, graphic on the bottom how our fat burning varies based on our based on our uh, heart rate and and what zone we're in. So thank you very much. Appreciate you listening. Have a great one. Now, for those of you who don't know, this is Stony. She, she will be riding alongside with me on the Nick, on this training video. You might have already seen it because this is probably at the end of this three, but she hasn't ridden with me yet, so it's my turn next. I haven't rid, <laughs> rode many bikes, period, so this is going to be awesome. Mess you up. <laughs> <laughs> this is my punishment to hit yes, and then the payback. It's a punishment. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Paul. Right.